So you have a Ryzen 9 7900X and you wanna reduce the power consumption, reduce the temperature and increase the performance all at the same time. Well, it's the right video for you. And also, I have to compliment you for choosing your CPU because it's actually what's in my personal PC. And I see a ton of CPUs every day, but I pick this one for my main PC because I think it's the best value on the high end at the moment. The whole AM5 platform is great, but anyways, Let's get straight into the tutorial. The tutorial will be in the BIOS, but you can also do it uh, via Windows using the Ryzen Master, just use the same settings. But let's go in the BIOS and let's get started. Okay, so here we are in the BIOS. Now for this tutorial, we're gonna be using the MSI Pro X670P Wi-Fi. However, this will work regardless of your motherboard. But the BIOS settings will be slightly different. So if you have an ASRock BIOS, you, I do recommend you cross-reference my numbers with my Ryzen 9 7950X undervolting tutorial. And if you have a gigabyte motherboard, I do recommend you cross-reference these numbers with the Ryzen 7 7700X undervolting tutorial because there we're using a gigabyte motherboard. But the names will be very similar. Now, we're gonna have two profiles. The first profile is going to be the one I recommend for most of you. And the second one, which is a static offset, is going to be for those of you who mostly do productivity work and who really want to get the lowest possible temperature and lowest possible power consumption. But let's start with the first settings, which is the PBO, temp limit and curve optimizer settings. Okay, so you get into the BIOS. Now we go into overclocking right there. And now you want to go in here and set overclocking mode to expert. Now, you want to go down until you find something called AMD overclocking. Now, you want to click on precision boost overdrive or PBO. You need to look for a settings that's called something like this. Again, the names will change a bit. Now, go into there and set precision boost overdrive to advanced. Okay, now you also have a few presets here, which are good but we are professionals, so we are setting it to advance. Now, we wanna go under until you find something that's called platform thermal throttle limit or temperature limit. Something with thermal limit or temperature limit. And you wanna input 80, okay? So set 80 into there, you just hit enter and hit 80. Now, what's this? This is the maximum temperature you will allow your CPU to reach. Now, if you know how these Ryzen works, basically they boost as high as they want until they achieve the temperature that is the max that you allow them to. So out of the box, they go all the way to 95 degrees. However, you're gonna usually draw a bit more power and be a bit more noisy. So I do recommend 80, but you can play around with this. And I do recommend you go as low as 75 and as high as 85. I, I wouldn't really go higher, but eh, hey, if you really don't care about your processor, you can also put this to 95, but Trust me, copy my settings. Now, we wanna go down until you find the curve optimizer. Now, GFX curve optimizer is graphics curve optimizer, so we're not using that. Go on curve optimizer, and we wanna input it on all curve, curve optimizer sign negative, and then we input 20. So we're basically running our curve with an offset of minus 20, okay? On the whole curve, we are dropping it down 20 and effectively undervolting it. Now here, the lower you go, or better, the higher this number, so for example, minus 30, okay? This is gonna reduce your temperature even more and it's not gonna reduce your performance. So the lower you go here, the better. It's actually gonna increase the performance because if you have less volts, uh, you will hit your temperature target slower, and so you will boost higher. But basically, you want to get this as high as possible. So if you're able to run minus 30, please do it. Uh, but most CPUs will run with minus 20, and if you're very unlucky, you might have to settle with minus 10. You need to test this out on your own, but if you want to just copy the settings, just put minus 20, and you'll be fine, okay? So this is it for the PBO and basically the dynamic uh, settings. Now, if we want to do the static ones, which is the one I was talking about at the beginning, it's very simple. It's actually much simpler to input. So you want to just go into the overclocking category of your BIOS right here. Don't do anything of what we've done previously. If you have done it, just reset your BIOS. Just reset your BIOS. And then you want to get into the OC mode, set the overclocking mode to expert, 
go into CPU ratio mode and put it to all core. And now under CPU ratio, you wanna put 48. This will make your CPU run at 4,800 megahertz, as you can read right down there. And now you wanna go all the way down until you find something that's called CPU core voltage. You wanna put this one on manual or override mode, and then you wanna input 1.2 volts right there. And this is it, this is really it. However, a few extra settings. So the higher the CPU ratio, the more performance you're gonna get. So most CPUs we're gonna work at 4.8 gigahertz and 1.2 volts. So again, I do recommend you guys the most stable settings with the best value for money, uh, if we wanna call it that way. However, if you wanna play around with this a bit and you're feeling lucky, 49 might work. And if you have a golden chip, 50 might work. You need really a golden chip for 50 to work. But 49 will work on many chips. If you are extremely unlucky and you boot into Windows and you experience crashes, set this to 47, okay? Now, voltage-wise, the lower you go, the less the stability, okay? However, the lower you go, the lower the temperature, the lower the power consumption, the lower the noise, etc. Now, I have not had a chip able to run at 1.15, but 1.175, I've seen it. Uh, so you can try this and if you want to push like 5 gigahertz You can go as high as 1.2 to 5 But I wouldn't really go higher because you are losing the benefits of undervolting really so This is it for the tutorial in case you want to see what I did with my personal build I have a dedicated video on the channel and I do have a playlist for CPU undervolting CPU overclocking GPU undervolting and GPU overclocking in case you want to take a look at this if this was helpful, please drop a like and a sub. It really helps and stay tuned for more tech content. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.